the eminent wrestling journalist, is sprinkled into the show. And I think that made a huge difference because Dave ended up liking the interview so much that he put him on his own show. Um, where you know, right in the middle of his own show to his own audience, I'm talking to Dave Meltzer all of a sudden about WrestleMania one, then two, then three, then four, then five. That had to make a huge difference. Now we weren't paying close enough attention and didn't really have access to analytics at the time to be able to say empirically that that's the case, but they're all up on our YouTube, all the Dave Meltzer conversations. And, you know, those convos do more than even archived interviews I've done with like Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's just, it's, yeah, right. I mean, they've been around a lot longer and uploaded a lot longer, but there's something, there's something that's right in the sweet spot about those conversations. Just, just dredging up like uh, memories, data, report, reporting on the past. And so, yeah, that- I think also too, I feel like we're asking questions. Well, Jack mostly asking questions that about subjects that probably aren't always asked about with him. You know, I, you know, there, I feel like, they're that like there curiosities are, you didn't know you had, you know? Yeah. And I feel like there, there are like, you know, take a drink questions. Like I'm sure he's asked about Montreal a million times. I bet he's asked about, you know, Benoit a million times. And it's like these, these, subjects that everyone goes to that you know who cares you know it's like it's it's not interesting but then when he, you see him and talking about all these shows and then they then it you know it it, it really piques people's interest i think well, journey, I mean, that's the go ahead you're trying to achieve something like yeah. if you're going to do a podcast and you want it to resonate you want shelf life to be a thing you want people to have a reason to go back and listen to it you need to have a mission on each show to accomplish something. At the end of the day, there was all this shit out there, and we brought it together and made it a thing. In our case, the definitive audio guide to any subject we touch. Hard stop. Every time, without question, we say we say it all. It's there. If you've got the capacity, if you've got the nuts to listen to it all, it's there. If you don't, then fine. That that You have to work out your own issues with yourself. But meanwhile, we're over here, you know, telling the definitive tale of, of the biggest topics you can think of in wrestling history, and we'll continue to do so. And we're going to march through it chronologically, sparing no detail because audio allows us to do this. We don't, we're not subject to word count or some editor's sense of how concisely, how much more concisely the story can be told. Fuck that. We're just going to keep talking till we're done, and you can take it or leave it, and a whole lot of motherfuckers take it. And we take it to well, the bank. Yeah, and that's it, right? It's it's engendering loyalty and need. Notice, I didn't say want. Oh, I no, said need. No want. That's right. That's right. That you, it's not even, if people just want it, it's not even worth doing. You, They have to need it or else you're not going to survive. People aren't going people, to support people, it financially. People don't want our podcast. That's that's just the plain and simple truth. I, I expect that. I expect that going in. People need it. And... I say that half jokingly. I say it half seriously because we've heard, we've gotten emails galore. And this is probably one of the most humbling things that I never expected to happen when we decided to do this show is, is the people who have overcome something. Like there are people who have, who fight depression by listening to our show. There are people who have fought diseases. There are people who say they fight addiction listening to our show. There, there was a guy, I'll never forget this, because it was the first one we got about this, a guy got in a, had gotten in a car accident, and he was just depressed, and he, he was uh, miserable, and his whole life had gone to the shitter, and he started listening to our show and as he was rehabbing himself and then he made himself a promise that he could only listen to our show because he liked it so much, but he decided I can only listen to the lapsed fan when I am doing uh, physical therapy and getting better. And it made him get better. And he shared a story about how he walked through the gates, WrestleMania 31 up in uh, whatever the fuck that was. It's in California. But, it was in uh, yeah, it was Santa, California, Bar- uh, Santa Ana. More, San, was it, or San Jose. Yeah, well, San, I think Santa Ana is part of San Jose, yeah. No, I don't know. San Jose Whatever. proper. I don't know, I, know, I know SoCal. I don't know that. <laughs> Northern California bullshit. But like, yeah, you know, like that. to me, that, that, that was something that I was not expecting and something that I'm very proud of is the people who actually 
need it. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. Um, I it's to go back to what Jack was saying about you know an interview and and, and asking what you were saying, JP, rather about about Jack asking questions of Dave that that maybe he hasn't heard before. It, it feels like to me that that's really the differentiator between a good interviewer and a bad interviewer is somebody who's doing the right amount of research to get something unique out of a subject that may well feel tapped out. Um, didn't he call didn't Dave call you Jack one of the didn't he didn't he say you and and Steve Austin were like the best interviewers? Yes, he one did. Time? Yeah. He did say that. Okay. Yep. Um but but that's just it, right? I mean Jack and that's the 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 second piece of this programming bit that I wanted to talk about. You've you've made a career out of research. Um most most and and you know that's separate from the podcast, but you're you're a, a researcher by trade. Most most people go one or two sources deep um and that's the end of it and that's why most wrestling podcasts suck um you're exhaustive like you you know not to to torture a metaphor but you go hard and deep um is is it a joy or is it a pain 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 yep absolute pain (laughs) um you know unless ironically and post modernly right. the pain is the joy right mm. right yeah. yeah you find that you know unless you're feeling some pain you're not really sure if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing you know like why am i not uncomfortable <laughs> um so and you tell yourself oh man what a world if i had this much time i could do it at a leisurely pace no you take as much time as you have to do what you have to do there's no stopping early you just keep going and you go and going. But, you know, what it is, is this is a subject matter where I happen to know who the major uh, 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 developers, who the major contributors, creators are of history, you know, in wrestling. Like, I know probably who's done shoot interviews. Those are like, that's a term of art in wrestling for wrestlers talking legitimately, not in character, but about their real lives and backgrounds. I know who's done the shoot interviews. I know who's been around during the shoot interview era to look to those. I know... Uh, who would have written about wrestling uh, that we're talking about at the time it happened contemporaneously. I know kind of where, you know, which stones to turn over, what search terms to use. What, I just know this because I've been such an obsessive fan all my life that it makes, it, it's it's a joy in a way because I know somewhere inside me, I want to be doing this even if I didn't have a podcast to do it for, but I also know that I wouldn't if I didn't, right? So like I got a bookshelf full of wrestling books, but I would not read them uh, like I do, if I was if I didn't have this animating force of trying to say something definitive on a podcast about a subject, and so yeah, you've got to you, you have to go through your mental rolodex of like, all right, who's written books that was in and around this scene? Um, who would have covered it in the newspapers? Uh, what what would the newsletters have said? Um, has anybody talked about this period of their lives or career? I mean, this is a golden age for a show like this because by now. The, the the time period we cover in wrestling history has been thoroughly chronicled and, and the book market has has been thoroughly exhausted in terms of like book deals going to any wrestler really that could have been around at the time. And so what they have to say is 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 down and is understood. And, and you know, if they haven't said it by now, it's because, you know, there's there's an uncomfortable truth there that they're not willing to part with for the most part. But so all of this is a way of saying like there's joy in the fact that I know I want to do this kind of research about wrestling, but without an outlet like this, I wouldn't. But that doesn't mean that when I'm in the trenches, I'm loving every second of it. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like I, I know what I have to march through to reach a conclusion that will make the show worth listening to over and over again. Um, and that's that's good. But when you're in the middle of it, it can seem like you're like you're drowning sometimes. JP, you uh, recently have jumped on the research bandwagon. Um, there's a, yeah. uh, let's call it a, a spinoff uh, sure. of the lapsed fan um, that's totally available fair. to a, a, a level of Patreon contributor, contributor rather uh, called under the cinemat, um, which is in and of itself a piece of uh, lapsed vocabulary that we won't get into at this point, <laughs> but uh, you, you, have taken over that role on this particular show from Jack as the lead researcher. Yeah. How are you finding it? Um, 
I pain is exactly what it is. I definitely have found myself pretty much on every episode going like diving into the, the rabbit hole. It is so just to just just to for the uninitiated uh, uh, the idea here. So I am a lover of movies. I am a lover of cinema. Um, you know, I own way too many movies. I've seen way too many movies. It's one of my favorite things uh, to do. I studied at Emerson to be a film editor is what my my trade was going to be, what I wanted to do. Um, and so I read an offhand comment from someone, I don't know if it was on Patreon, Twitter, or one of the Discord chats, saying something about how they would love it if we did a Patreon thing that was kind of watching this movie, some movie, I don't know what it was. And that just went boom, like it just clicked in my head. We got to do something about wrestlers in movies, which opens up a huge spectrum because wrestlers are, you know, involved in movies in so many different ways. I kept it to creative and stuff. And, and, and so I started doing it. And the idea was that I would do the research and Jack would, would sit there and, and absorb like I do on the main show and the I grew a whole not that I didn't appreciate it before but until you actually step into the shoes you have no fucking idea the amount of work that Jack does you know like we both have our fair share of work for the regular lapsed fan but when it comes to the to the research itself like it is uh, it is an immense an immense undertaking and um, I was actually just talking about this with my wife today, how, how I, over the course of the last couple of months, since we've been doing the show, I know that I can, once I've gathered all of my resources and I'm looking at newspapers, I'm looking at, uh, 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 books, I'm looking at, at YouTube clips, I'm looking at podcasts, I'm looking at, um, uh, 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 special features on DVDs and stuff like that. Like trying to get as, again, tell the definitive story about this wrestler in this movie and the story of the creation of this motion picture. And the, I know that I can, once I've gathered all my information, I can put it together in two, two days. I know that if I give myself two full days of work time on it, I can get it done. And it doesn't matter. I, and I usually, so we record normally uh, that on, on, a, on, a, on Tuesday nights. And so Monday and Tuesday are my preparation days to like kind of formulate my script, decide what the story is, you know, out of all these clippings and all. And usually it's about, I'll say it's about 40 pages of notes that I've gathered and different stories that I try to whittle down between 15 and 20 pages. That that'll be a good, uh, that's always, that that's kind of the good uh, page limit to have a, a proper size show. And the whole weekend is, is pretty much ruined for me because I don't, I, you know, we, I take the, the Saturday and Sunday off. Um, usually Sunday I'm wrecked anyway, because we've been a laps fan on Friday night and I'm a complete disaster the next day. Just, you know, if I don't, I, I you know, we, I'm a mess. I'm an absolute useless individual on Saturdays. And, but nonetheless, it's on the back of my brain that my, do I have enough time? Do I have enough time Monday and Tuesday to make sure the show is ready to do Tuesday night? Do I have enough time? I know that I do. I know that I'll get it done. Like Jack was saying, like, it's going to happen. We're going to, I'm going to get it done. But my God, does the, does the, the, the anxiety not completely like sit in the back of my head for the entire fucking weekend until Monday morning, my kids at school and I can get down to work. And can I rope it back to the Patreon thing? Because I'm sure some people's eyes were raised when you said the number. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we're ever going to get stuff like this made in this modern media culture. Oh, yeah. Is if the is if when you're in that moment of doubt, when you're in that moment of should I try as hard as I did last time, this time, that you have to face a public that has said, if you work harder, we'll give you more. And we're not sitting here with our arms folded saying, work harder for me, but there's something more powerful.